One of the most popular claims that is made by Christian evangelists and Christian missionaries and just Christian lay people to promote their particular faith is that their embrace of Christianity changed their life. And they'll report dramatic changes in the quality of their life. They may have been depressed. They may have had problems with certain addictions. They may have felt that life had no real meaning. And they will report enthusiastically that since becoming a Christian, their life has improved dramatically. They now feel a tremendous amount of energy, a tremendous lift in life. They feel the opposite of depression. They feel very, very much like their life is very positive. They feel a tremendous amount of energy. Many of their problems that they had in terms of the way they were living, it could have been living less than honestly, maybe not honoring their parents, maybe abusing drugs. Whatever things they were doing prior to their conversion experience, they will report have changed dramatically and their life is 180 degrees different. The argument obviously is that this proves the truth claims of Christianity. The simplest way of puncturing this claim is to realize that virtually every religion in the world reports the same dramatic changes in the lives of adherents of those religions. If you listen to the testimony of the various denominations within Christianity, who many Christians insist are not legitimate expressions of Christianity, you will find similar testimonies from Roman Catholics, from Mormons, from people who were part of various what are called Christian cults like Jehovah's Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists, etc. All of these, all of these different groups within Christianity report the same kinds of dramatic changes in their lives, and the same is true of non-Christian religions. If you listen to the testimony of people who have become Buddhists or Hindus or Jains or Sikh or Baha'i, people that have converted to Judaism, people that have joined virtually any organized religion or even disorganized religion in the world, people who have adopted a new philosophy in life, even people who begin various hobbies like taking up painting or learning martial arts or going to therapy. People that undertake changes in their lives will often report positive, dramatic changes, positive changes. And so it's clear that if all of these different religions whose beliefs are mutually exclusive all report that they have experienced positive changes in their lives, so it becomes very obvious that false beliefs, false ideology, can produce changes in someone's life. The simplest reason is very easy to understand. If a person is living a directionless life, a life without direction, a life without focus, a life without meaning, which is very possible in our world, where there often aren't values that people embrace. We live in often a valueless world, a world that's very chaotic and hectic, and people are taught to just pursue whatever gives them pleasure. So when people leave that kind of rudderless life and life without values and meaning and direction, and they embrace any kind of spiritual path, they will report that their life has improved. So it's very clear that when people report that their lives have been improved after accepting a certain religious faith and tradition and path, it is not a proof that that religion is true. One of the things that happens beyond these claims of a better lifestyle and a better quality of life are that people claim that there have been dramatic miracles as a result of their experience within Christianity. That's one of the major features of the New Testament. One of the major selling points that's offered 
for the veracity, for the truth of Christianity, are all the miracles that were allegedly performed by Jesus and his disciples. And the argument is very simple. How would it be possible for them to do these miracles if they were not empowered by God? So the evidence of miracles is often used as a way of cementing and strengthening the claim that the teachings of this religion here, Christianity, must be true because of the reality of miracles. We know, however, that the same problem exists. Every religion in the world is able to claim that believers and followers of that path experience the miraculous in their lives. And we see in our Bible, in the Jewish scriptures, we're warned about this. God warns us in the 13th chapter of Devarim, the 13th chapter of Deuteronomy, that he is basically going to be sending, God will be sending false prophets to the Jewish people. They're going to be coming to us. And God says that these false prophets will have the ability to perform incredible supernatural miracles, signs and wonders. So the question is very obvious. If these are false prophets, why would God give them the ability to do signs and wonders and miracles? And the Bible says right there in Deuteronomy chapter 13, because God is going to be using these miracles to test us, to see if we're going to stay loyal to him and to his Torah, or if we're going to get misled by these incredibly miraculous demonstrations by the prophets of false religions. It's interesting that even the Christian Bible contains the same warning. In the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 24, Matthew warns Christians that false messiahs will be coming who have the ability to do incredibly supernatural miracles. So here in the Christian Bible itself, it says that false messiahs are able to perform miracles. Once we know that false messiahs can do miracles, we see that the performance of a miracle cannot prove that someone is the real messiah. So one thing we know, that people experience dramatic changes in their lives, even the miraculous, healings from illness, and other incredible miracles. And we know one thing, that this reality of changed lives, and even the miraculous, does not prove that the beliefs of the people that are going through the experiences are true. One thing is very possible. God is a very big God. And God is able to answer human prayer, even when the person praying may not be praying properly or may not be directing their heart in the right direction. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of kindness. And so God, as the God and the Father of all human beings, is going to extend that mercy and that kindness to his creatures, even if they don't necessarily have the exactly correct theology. And so we will see that people who are ill from every religion in the world may experience divine healings because God is kind and God is merciful.